Cool. All right, let's go ahead and get started, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the webinar. Thanks for hopping on State of Remodeling, How to Prepare for 2021. Uh, we've got an awesome group of panelists here today. Go ahead and give everybody a wave. Hey, guys. So we've got a great group of panelists here. We'll give them the chance to introduce themselves as they uh, present uh, their, their uh, subject matter expertise here today. And as we get started here, I'm gonna play a video from the CEO of Nary, David Peckle. He uh, recorded a video for us uh, to welcome us to the webinar and a little bit of a state of the union of sorts. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that now. At a time when it can feel like it's against all odds, consumer demand for residential remodeling services are rapidly approaching an industry setting record high. Today's homeowners are better educated and more savvy than their predecessors, due in part to the quality of information, the volume of data, and the resources that are available to them at their fingertips. Gone are the days where clients relied exclusively on contractors and designers to help them navigate through trends, capabilities, and options that are available to their homes. Now clients come to the table armed with the knowledge of what they want, when they want it, and they want it now. So the only question that remains in the minds of many remodeling prospects is who can deliver on those expectations and do so in the most timely manner possible. In today's marketplace, selling is often viewed as being the easy part, producing the work and managing the expectations of a sophisticated client is hard, and that's what's going to win the race. To be a successful company, you have to embrace and leverage the state-of-the-art tools that are available to you to allow you to be nimble and agile in this fast-paced environment. Client expectations have never been higher and they demand excellent real-time communication from you. Those companies that can capitalize on these tools are going to have a competitive advantage and will differentiate themselves in the marketplace. Meeting those shifting client expectations will create greater client success stories, enhance your profitability and increase business opportunities. To gain those advantages, I encourage you to learn the excellent strategies and tactics that have been assembled in this ebook for you. All right. I want to thank David uh, Peckle, the CEO of Nary, for, uh, for providing that for us today. All right. Go ahead and uh, get back to sharing the presentation here, guys. Like I mentioned before, we've got a, a rock star panelist here, uh, Chris from Hatch, Kevin from WebRunner, James from Hearth. Chris from Improver 360, Cassie from Modernize, and Dean from Engage. And they're going to each have an opportunity uh, to share their subject matter expertise in their particular field. So looking forward to that as we get along here. But I want to keep this webinar as engaging as possible, guys. I uh, want to hear how 2020 was for your business. So I'm going to drop a poll real quick. So uh, please hop on over to the poll section and let us know how 2020 was for you. I know uh, anecdotally and, and, and seeing the data, uh, there's a lot of uh, great news coming out of this year. Obviously, a lot of uncertainty early on, uh, but everybody's stuck at home, wanting jobs done, and we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of demand for, for remodeling projects, especially over the summertime and hopefully continuing into the winter months. Chris Rice, I, I know that you are going to be touching on this in a bit, but looks like the panelists, I mean, excuse me, a lot of the attendees, it looks over 50% are seeing better results than last year. Yeah, and that, that's really in line with, you know, the conversations I have with folks out in the marketplace. Um, I'd say that's pretty much on par with what I've been hearing. Um, and I think we'll talk about this a little bit more, but it's really companies who were prepared to pivot quickly and adjust quickly. Um, are seeing tremendous growth. Um, others had a harder time. I mean, um, you know, between the technology, managing not only their staff, um, you know, customer expectations and what people want, getting materials, supplies, um, there, mm. there have been some challenges. But um, I would say, you know, what I'm, and I was actually pulling up the poll to look at that, um, 
I would say those numbers are pretty much in line and it, and it's evolved as the months have gone on. Um, I think early on there was definitely, you mentioned uncertainty. There was a lot of that, but um, we've seen that transition. I think June, we hit a peak and it, it hasn't stopped. I mean, that that's what we're seeing from most of our customers anyway. Exactly. And, and like, and like we've seen this past year, everybody's having to do more with less. And as David mentioned, uh, CEO of Nary just now, uh, talking about adopting technology to increase efficiencies in your business. Uh, the folks here on this webinar today, uh, the panelists, they've got great companies that create great efficiencies for your business, and they're going to have an opportunity to share a little bit about their companies. But uh, thanks for participating in the poll here, guys. It looks like most of you guys are seeing better than last year. Uh, some are worse than last year, but luckily that's only 14% and 24% of you guys are about the same. So thanks for participating in that poll. This is going to help frame the discussion later on. So it's encouraging to see that more than half of you guys are are uh, seeing better results than last year. So the next question, and we talked about this, Chris, just now about uh, you know supply shortages and challenges there, and it's causing jobs to be booked out many months in advance for for a lot of different remodelers. So head on over the poll here. How far out are you guys booking jobs right now? So if a lead comes in right now, you go to you go run the appointment. Uh, and they decide to buy, how far out are you booking jobs? And it's interesting because we have a lot of different types of remodelers on this webinar today. Uh, and there's also some roofers here as well and some siding folks. So it's interesting to see the results here. It's like a majority of you guys are staying within three months. So it looks like we're a majority of you guys are booking jobs out within three months, three to six months, 27%. And in six plus months, there's uh, one, one company and, and that represents 3% of the, uh, the population there. So interesting data there. Do any of the panelists have anything to weigh in on this? It seems to be that we're, we're seeing an interest, like seeing it, you know, a couple months ago, demand obviously sky high, jobs are getting booked out months and months in advance. Do any panelists have some thoughts as to uh, why that number is now you know zero to three months as opposed to three to six months? I mean, I'll just put you know what I've heard on this. You know, one I think supply chain is you know catching up a little bit. Um, I think yeah. every, again there was a big adjustment for everyone, um, but it's not only the supply side, but also um, having the labor to actually do the work. And I think there was a time, um, especially early on, um, and some people shared feedback with me. You know, with the unemployment benefits, they were having a really hard time hiring labor. Um, I think that has started to change a little bit. More people are coming back to work. They're bringing staff back on that maybe they had to furlough for a while. Um, and that's, that's helping, um, to cut down those times. Um, and I, but I think you hit the nail on the head earlier where a lot of it is very dependent on the product category they're installing. Um, you know, what exactly are you doing? I mean, certain markets have been hit harder than others on the supply side. Um, but it's great to see that you know, that zero to three being the, the, the largest number, that's fantastic um, because that's really one of the, the biggest challenges that everyone I talk to, that is what they're facing right now is that backlog. Um, and I think maybe part of it is also maybe, you know, that traditionally um, in many parts of the country, this time of year would slow down a little bit, but, you know, they're not slowing down. They're continuing to work and continuing to install. And, you know, as long as the weather holds out, they can get these jobs done and keep these installs moving along at a, a, a quicker pace than maybe they were able to in the past. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I don't want to steal Cassie's thunder from Modernize, but she's going to have some really interesting stats on uh, consumer demand during the what's traditionally been known as the off season. Yeah. Cassie, I'm really looking forward to that. Great. So just again, housekeeping items here. Uh, today's format, we're going to keep it super simple. Uh, we've got two different panels here. Uh, first panel is going to talk about lead gen. We're, we're, we're looking at this, this webinar and, and think of it like your sales funnel. So we're going to start with lead gen, uh, getting folks interested in, in what you guys do, booking those appointments, and then let's go through the sales process here uh, for the second panel. I'm excited for that. A lot of good data here, insights to share. And then of course, Q&A, ask us anything and hop on over to the Q&A section on the right hand side of your webinar and ask us anything throughout the webinar. So with that said, I, I want to pass this over to Chris. We, we heard 
a little bit about, you know, a little bit from you already, Chris. So thanks for, for mm-hmm. participating in that. But uh, just want to give Chris a shout out here. Chris has been the sales manager with Improve It 360 since 2016 with over 20 years of sales experience spanning advertising, healthcare, IT, and SaaS sales management. In his current role, he takes a highly consultative approach to help home improvement companies see how Improve It 360 can streamline processes and increase sales. So with a passion for helping others um, to succeed, the best part about his job is helping them and giving the opportunity to speak to business owners, help them better understand the positive impact the right technology can have on their business. So Chris, thanks for hopping on. Take it away. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, it, it really makes sense that, you know, we have, um, you know, Improver 360 kind of batting lead off here. Um, I'm usually more of a cleanup guy, but, you know, I'll take lead off today. Um, because the way we envision things, you know, your, your CRM and, and we like to think of ourselves as much more than a CRM. You know, it's really a business management platform because you'll see that a lot of the other folks who are going to be speaking today, I mean, that the CRM or your, your core platform is the hub. This is where everything kind of originates um, or all the data is stored, but it works well with those other platforms. And that's really critical today. Um, and that's one of the things, you know, with, you know, we, we pride ourselves of being a leading um, industry specific solution, um, managing from prospect to project. Um, so helping to streamline that and working with some of these other systems um, that we're going to talk about later on, whether we hatch and modernize, you know, because they, they had the systems have to talk. Um, it's got to go into your CRM so then you can have that path for follow-up, whether it be through a phone system, you know, making outbound calls with your call center, or then maybe starting a drip um, texting campaign to try to get that appointment booked. Uh, so that's what um, we really sit in the middle, I like to say. We're the center of it all, and then you have all these other pieces that come together to really you know, make sure that you're getting the most out of every read that you generate. That's what our goal is. Um, with Improve It 360, just a couple of the things about us that make us unique, um, one being that all-in-one system from again, from prospect to project. But we are unique because we are built on the Salesforce platform. So we do provide a level of configurability that is really, you know, from what I've seen, unmatched in the marketplace. But focusing on those best practices for home improvement companies, um, from getting that lead, scheduling the appointment, whether it be in-home or virtual, either way, um, and then making sure that you have those follow-ups in place um, so none of those leads slip through the cracks. And the one part I always like to talk about is the reporting capabilities of this platform. Um, I'd say most of the folks who end up coming over to talk to me, um, and as we do take a, a Josh mentioned, you know, we do take a very consultative approach because we want to help you find the right system. But our reporting is absolutely second to none. If you're looking for deep insights to your business, which is the key to growth, that's where the Improve It 360 platform really shines. Um, and you know, we'll, I'll have my contact information after if you want to learn more, or just have a have a chat. I'm always open to having a discussion, love learning about new businesses um, and trying to figure out, you know, if we might be a fit. Or you know, point you in the right direction. If there's something else that you know, from from my experience, that might be better suited for your business, that's what our role is to help other businesses succeed. So, um, with that, we'll we'll jump into uh, some of the numbers here and uh, a little bit more information about this year. And it has been quite a year. I don't know about you guys, but uh, man, I'm ready for 2021. Um, you know, there was a lot of fear and uncertainty and on March. You know, January, February, things were moving along pretty well, and then March, it was like you know. Oh boy. Um, and, you know, I think it was March 20th was the date a lot of people, you know, drop as kind of, you know, whether there were shutdowns um, and businesses had to pivot. Um, many, fortunately, many of the home improvement businesses were seen as being, um, you know, essential businesses and were able to continue operating, but not all. Some had to really um, deal with some tough times, you know, from having to shut down, furlough staff, um, and then get ready to come back. Um, those who were able to continue operating through that had to change, you know, and fortunately, many of them had technology in place, whether it be a cloud-based CRM system, so their staff could work remotely, their call center could work remotely. These were keys to making sure they could continue to operate their business um, effectively through that. And I'm sure there were some bumps in the road, but they were able to, you know, capitalize on, you know, as the, you know, the virus, you know, the I guess the pandemic um, continued as months went on, you know, more and more people started to have to cancel vacations. They had, they were spending more time at home and that made a big impact on the home improvement industry. Um, I don't know about yourself, but with me even kind of looking around my house, you know, 
I'm going to be stuck here for a while. I want to make it as much of an oasis as possible. Um, you know, and trying to look at things that we can improve and, you know, reaching out to people. And that was really important. So some of the other tools that we'll look at later on would be Engage, um, looking at, uh, you know, other tools that you could use to schedule those appointments and meet virtually. Um, those were important. And those who were able to make that pivot quickly really capitalized on it. Um, and that's what we'll see if we can go to the next slide, some of the numbers um, that actually um, were part of this ebook that um, was created. You know, 130% increase in monthly sales from March to May. And I think with a, a peak then really coming in June, um, that's what we've seen. Um, with our customer base as well. And, you know, the way that we really can gauge this, you know, from uh, as a, you know, kind of the, the core, the CRM, you know, the central system for many is we've seen an explosion in add-on users as the year has gone on with many of our customers. So they're bringing staff back on. They're adding new staff to help them um, both on the sales side and on the installation side. Um, we're seeing average sales are up. Um, close rates are up and the increase in conversions from those digital leads. So the weed volume is up um, and it's not just tire kickers. It's not people just kind of looking around, you know, maybe I'm thinking about doing this. They're going forward with the work and they want to get it done and they want to get it done quickly, as we can see here. And I think that's especially been, um, you know, from what I hear, the kitchen and bath market has just exploded. Um, those are areas in particular that we've seen a tremendous amount of growth. Um, and, you know, the key is now, you know, then managing that backlog and we'll talk about that more and having, you know, the communication um, with customers has been more critical than ever and using tools like a hatch and some of the others that we'll um, talk about later to want to engage those prospects virtually when needed, um, as well as then being able to communicate them and keep them updated on statuses. You know, where is my project? You know, you don't want them falling off after you've gone through the work of getting that sale. Um, sales are great. But if you don't get the install done, you know, it's, you know, it does, it's not going to help your business much. Um, so having all of this data, having this information um, is something that is allowing companies to grow and scale. And um, not only those who made the pivot quickly, but we're seeing a lot of other companies who have decided maybe their systems, their legacy systems were not up to par. Um, they had something that was, you know, maybe 15, 20 years old. It's not you know, able to connect to a lot of these other systems. And that's where, again, having a cloud-based industry-specific um, CRM system is critical to growing your business. Um, and you know, it, as far as um, just kind of looking ahead a little bit to 2021, and Josh touched on this, we're not seeing a slowdown. Um, it's, you know, continuing, there is no slow season. Um, I'm talking to businesses now and they're still absolutely slammed, which is fantastic. Um, I think everyone's kind of ready for a breather maybe over the holidays, but you know, from right now, it's still the pedal to the metal. Um, so that's a great, great news for the industry. And I think it's a great, um, prospect for continuing this into 2021, even if, as we come out of the pandemic a little bit, um, you know, with, the, um, having, um, people, you know, get the, um, and, and my mind is going completely blank right now. Um, but you know, they're exploring that there is a lot that they can do within their home. They're looking at their home as being a place that they want, they're going to, they spend a lot of time. And, you know, even after, you know, post pandemic, I guess we can say they'll still continue to, um, they want to make sure it's, um, you know, the best place it can be. So, um, that's kind of my, you know, what I've seen in the marketplace this year and, you know, projections for next year. Interesting. Chris, the, the stat that, that I'm, I'm, honing in on is 30% increase in close rate from digital leads mm -hmm. versus 2019. What, what do you mean by that? And, and what is that, what can contractors take away from that number? Yeah. I mean, you have to make sure that, you know, I mean, we know, and that's been a trend that's been growing anyway. I mean, just, um, and I think it's just, we've seen, I think a lot of the things that have happened and I've heard some others, you know, industry, you know, leaders talk about this. These are trends that they were happening anyway. You know, people were starting to inquire, you know, look for, especially the millennial generation, looking for more virtual ways to reach out to companies and meet with companies, you know, going to Google, going to Facebook, um, using social media for those digital leads. That's become, it's just accelerated the process. And I think that's where we're seeing those numbers really grow, you know, whether it be younger homeowners or, you know, even the, you know, people like me. Um, I know I'm, I'm much more responsive to advertising through social media. Um, when I'm looking for something, I start with Google, the Google machine. You know, that's where I'm, I'm kicking off my search. Um, 
But what's interesting is that in addition to that, I'm also hearing a lot of people um, also kicked up their TV, TV and radio advertising because more people were paying, paying attention to TV. So it's been a combination. I think all lead sources are up, but definitely digital is an area that has accelerated tremendously. And I think we'll continue to. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. And, and you teed it up really nicely for, for Kevin Donnelly over at Web Runner. Uh, so, uh, all right. Take it over. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, I want to introduce Kevin Donnelly, the co founder and chief of customer success over at Web Runner. He's uh, part of the Web Runner, a marketing company that helps contractors across North America acquire customers more predictably. Uh, Kevin, I think a lot of those folks from Canada here on the webinar are, are folks that you've invited, I can assume, because you're based in Canada, <laughs> right? We're based in Canada here in Montreal, exactly. Yep, and I know for a fact they've got a lot of contract contractor customers here in the States. We work with a lot of them, seen a lot of success from WebRunner. Uh, Kevin's got a background in management informa information systems, and Kevin invests his time working very closely with clients to help them leverage the industry leading technologies and marketing best practices to ensure they receive a positive return on their advertising dollars. And Kevin, that's what we want, a positive return. Exactly. So like Josh, like you were, you were mentioning, uh, just a quick intro here. WebRunner, like you, you mentioned, we're basically a marketing company that works with you only home improvement contractors. And what we do really quickly is we, Put together we build a marketing system that's designed to generate more predictable leads for remodelers and the way we do that is we run killer ads on all the major networks so we're running ads for our customers across google facebook instagram and so forth they're all there at the bottom and we send the traffic to customized web pages that we design and they're designed specifically to maximize our potential to convert those visitors into potential you know qualified leads for your business the beauty behind all this, and Chris really mentioned it, is you need to really have a system in place that speaks and plays nice with all the major systems out there. So all the leads that we generate integrate with all the major CRMs. We work very closely with Hatch. All the leads get brought into the platform, and it really helps a lot of our remodelers close that business because speed to lead is definitely king here in this game. What I want to talk to you guys a little bit about today was specific to Google. And Chris mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. When he just goes and does searches, Google's usually the first network that he considers. So what we did is we looked at a lot of the accounts that we manage, and we sort of wanted to look at the last two years worth of data to see what kind of progression are we seeing, what's the trend that we're noticing. And one of the things that really stood out is, believe you know, the cost per click on Google is getting more and more expensive. So advertising on Google, it's an auction. A lot of remodelers want to increase the visibility that they get on that uh, search engine when customers go on there and search for their business and their services. So naturally what happens is everybody's trying to overbid each other. It raises the price to generate that traffic for your business. So surprisingly, the trend that we saw over the last two years is there's an increase of 15% in that lead cost, or not the lead cost, sorry, in the click cost that we're seeing. And if you go to the next slide, I'm going to basically show you the reaction that most of our customers get when they see that. So a lot of people start questioning, is Google really the best channel to, to advertise my business, considering that it's getting more and more expensive? So Google remains the number one source uh, to generate very qualified leads for remodelers. And it's been like that forever. So even though we're seeing the click cost increase over time, what we're using is a lot of technology. We're using machine-based learning tools. We're using AI, and a lot of the networks also have their own tools as well. And Josh, if you go to the next uh, slide, what you notice by using a lot of this tech is that although the click cost is consistently increasing year over year, a lot of these tools allow us to do a better job at optimizing the campaigns and converting that traffic at a higher rate. So you don't need as much visitors in order to generate a lead. And when we look back at our accounts, we notice that our conversion rates are also increasing at a similar rate as the click cost. So between 2019 and 2020, our conversion rates have globally gone up about 12%. And because of that, it offsets the cost per lead. And we've noticed really a negligible increase of $3 between 2019 and 2020 in the lead cost. So if you were to talk to me maybe about two years ago and you'd say, Kevin, you know, there's all these networks, where do I put my money? 
I would have told you, let's maximize our potential on Google first, because like I mentioned before, that's where a lot of the people go to, to do their searches. The quality of the leads that come out of Google are by far very good compared to some of the other networks. But what we've really seen this year is Facebook has really brought up their game. Their algorithm has changed throughout the year and they do a really good job at, um, at generating uh, customers at an equal cost that we're starting to see now in Google. So back in the day where we would put, let's just say 75% of a customer's budget towards Google first and just put the rest 15 to 20% in Facebook, this year we started shifting the budgets around. And now when we get new customers and we onboard these, the, these remodelers, what we're doing is we're basically, if the budget permits, we're putting 50% of the budget in Facebook, 50% in Google to really see which one of the two networks is driving that customer acquisition cost at the lowest amount possible. And then from there, we're bringing the shifts. So to go to the next slide, my predictions of what I'm seeing from this moving into uh, next year is I think Facebook is definitely gonna start to take a little bit more market share and as remodelers, what's really important is to come create a lot of engaging stories. Now, what I mean by engaging stories is that and video is king on Facebook. So all the different ad formats that we've tested over the last few years, video outperformed everything. And it's really the number one type of ad that we run most of the time on Facebook. But to do video, we need remodelers to create a lot of these great video content that we could use for these different platforms. So engaging content, I'm talking about you know, showcase the people in your company, you know, share who's behind the name of that business. At the end of the day, customers, you know, people are buying from people. They're not buying the name on the showroom. They're basically buying the people behind the company. So these engaging videos are super important to be able to show your customers who's behind the company. What are we doing? Do videos regarding the different processes that the customers could expect to going, you know, working with your, your business. Uh, do videos on what customers experience ha have been working with your company. Um, financing is huge in the road modeling space. Do videos that show how is that process, what you could expect when working with a company, the different financial options that are available and so forth. By doing these engaging stories, one, you could use them everywhere. You can use them on your website, you can use them on YouTube, you, and obviously on Facebook. But what it also does is when you're going to get leads coming into your business, you're going to start to notice that the, these customers that are speaking to you are going to have a, a good understanding for who you are as a business because of the engaging stories that you've, uh, you've prepared over the year. The second thing that we're going to see happen a lot, I think, more in the next year is the you, you've got to really deliver a better customer experience. And what I mean specifically about that is consider the mobile traffic. When we did the exercise of analyzing the data in Google, we noticed that 65% of all the traffic that we were measuring was mobile traffic. So mobile is surpassing desktop and tablet traffic by a lot. And customers are using more and more of their cell phones to search for services and buy products. So your website or your landing page uh, needs to be designed to be extremely mobile friendly. Mobile traffic on Facebook is even higher than what we're seeing on Google. So it's even more of a reason to make sure that when customers are clicking on your ads and going to your page to consume your information, you have to go ahead and think about that traffic and really try to shorten up these pages for some of that mo those mobile visitors. The website visitors versus um, a desktop visitor versus a mobile visitor is really a different experience. And when we build our custom pages for our customers, we actually build the mobile pages first and we strip out a lot of the stuff that we'd normally put on the desktop because nobody really wants to spend, you know, scroll for five minutes down a page to try and consume all the information. So when it comes to that mobile traffic, we're going short, short and sweet to the point to try and get the message across as in the least amount of time as possible. Third thing that we're sort of predicting for next year is a better use of your data. Chris touched, about, uh, touched on that when he was talking about the CRM. Because all our leads that we generate are integrated with the major CRMs out there, including Prove It 360, um, we often need to dig into the CRM to have a look at the data. And you'd be surprised the number of companies that don't do a great job at keeping their information up to date. It's extremely important. A lot of the decisions that we make with all of our customer is based on the CRM information that we have in there. Uh, we've had customers that have 75 to 100 different lead sources in their CRM, and it makes it extremely challenging to try and figure out what's working and what's not working. 
So if there's really something to focus on in the next year, and especially during the holidays, if you have the time, really go through the CRM, try to clean it up. We don't usually recommend more than about 20, 25 lead sources because more than that, it becomes difficult to really see where we should be investing uh, our, our remodeler's money. So those are what I would say are really the three things that would have a huge impact on um, the trends that we're seeing for next uh, next year. Awesome, Kevin. Thanks for that. Uh, we had a couple questions come in during your session. I think it's important that we address this now. Uh, the first of which is with video being a key driver of branding and lead gen, do you recommend any video editing tools or recommendations for the newbie? Thanks. That's a good question. Um, there's a lot of different tools that exist uh, out there. We actually have an article on our website that covers that. Um, one of the things in regards, I don't have a, a recommended one tool to use. They all do ver the similar stuff. They're all just as good. But one thing that I do recommend when it comes to video, invest in the equipment. Um, we have customers that do videos off of their phone. And yes, the phones are great today. But you know, if you're outside or in the homes, you sometimes have out, you know, white noise that, that create issues with the videos. So definitely invest in some of the technology, invest in a good camera, invest in a mic, uh, invest in lighting equipment if necessary, because these videos are going to be used to promote your business, get your branding out there and help you close more business. So yeah, I think the, on the equipment side is definitely something to invest in. Um, but in regards to video editing tools, I don't really have a particular tool. You could, if you want, send me an email, Josh in the contact information, and I'll be more than happy to let you know what we use in, on our side and some of the tips and tricks that we do uh, when it comes to video as well. That's awesome, Kevin. Thank you. And, and, I, and I appreciate that a lot of people on the webinar right now are like, shoot, maybe I should start investing in, in advertising. If, if folks are looking to go, go at this right now, they get off the call, what are, some, what are a couple of the pitfalls that you see folks make when they just try to go at it um, on a whim, so to speak? Um, we come across companies that are used to getting referral business. Um, and the referral business is a different beast than when we're running uh, ads online. So one thing that I, that, I, that I see sort of often with certain companies, and one of the huge reasons why we recommend Hatch for all of our customers is that speed to lead. Speed to lead is huge. If you have a certain amount of time to take advantage of these leads as they come in, and Hatch is a perfect solution that addresses that. Chris is going to talk about that a little bit later. So he'll go into the numbers, and I back up everything that he says. We're seeing that on our side, that speed to lead plays a huge uh, importance in your chances of reaching your customer, number one, also in closing the business with your customer. The other thing that we, we also see as a bit of a pitfall is just the wrong expectations in regards to budget versus goals that we're trying to achieve. So we'll sometimes come across uh, companies that have a certain budget, but they want to promote uh, uh, you know, three, four services across all the major publishers, but the budget does not permit you to do that. So setting the right expectation is important. You're better off to limit where you're advertising your business and to maximize your budget in that area first become profitable in that area, and then at that point, expand into the other channels. And like I said, back in the day, we would always push Google number one, but today in 2020, we're trying to really balance out between Facebook and Google because we're seeing great results come in uh, to Facebook, and I think that's gonna continue uh, next year as well. Awesome stuff. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for hopping on. Really appreciate it. Good insights. All right, next up we have Cassie Morian from Modernize. She is the senior content strategist. For more than 15 years, Modernize has worked to connect homeowners with their contractors and other home services professionals. From my experience working with Hatch's customers, seeing how they um, get leads and how they come in, Modernize definitely has a lot of great quality leads. Uh, so I can vouch for them on my side. In her role, Cassie creates and shares educational resources, eBooks and articles that assist homeowners and contractors. It's, it's truly great content, guys. Cassie also oversees modernized homeowner surveys, analyzing data from thousands of homeowners to help home improvement professionals stay ahead of trends and preferences. So Cassie, thanks for hopping on. Really appreciate you joining us. Josh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet.
Uh, wonderful. If you are new to Modernize, I just wanted to provide the most brief introduction. Um, for more than 15 years, Modernize has been a leader in the home improvement and services industry. Our whole goal is to connect homeowners with contractors and remodelers and other home services professionals. Uh, we operate in more than 15 high value, high consideration trades, including windows, solar, roofing, um, air conditioning, bathrooms, kitchens, and more. And you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So each week at Modernize, we are lucky to survey thousands of our homeowners across the United States. And our goal doing this is to learn their project preferences and pain points. Um, the data I'm gonna show you today was taken in September and October of 2020. And in all, 5,000 surveys were completed. So COVID-19 has completely disrupted every facet of our lives, both personal and professional. Normally, this is a time of intense travel and spending in the United States. For our construction industry, in most regions, this is really viewed as the slowest time of the years. Homeowners are distracted, they're not, they're not home, they need to pause or cancel their projects. Um, in fact, in 2019, AAA predicted that there would be a record-breaking 115 million Americans traveling during the holiday season. Uh, but this winter, literally right now, is like no other. And so from our survey, we actually found that the vast majority, 76% of homeowners across trades are not traveling this holiday season. And the breakdown, just to give a little bit more added transparency, is 5% said they would travel their normal amount, 3% said they would travel less, 2% uh, said they would travel more, and 14% at this time of the survey were undecided. For us, that really quickly sparked our next question, which was if homeowners aren't traveling this holiday season, do they plan to begin or continue to improve their homes? Um, and the answer is yes. Thank you so much, Josh. 55% of homeowners across trades uh, plan to begin or continue home improvement projects this season, this winter. Um, and specifically 28% said they pursue uh, exterior projects, 10% said they would pursue interior projects, and 17 want to do a hybrid of both. Um, that obviously led to our next question, which was, we wanted to find out how, home, how much homeowners wanted to spend this winter, um, how much money they wanted to invest back in their homes. And so 48% of our homeowners surveyed plan to spend $1,001 to $10,000 on their home improvement projects this winter. Another 11% want to spend more than $10,000. Um, this isn't a slide, but or like an image, but it's in our ebook, but we also asked how they plan to pay for these projects. 39% of homeowners across trades said they would pay with cash. Um, 26 said they would seek financing or loans. 17% said they plan to use credit cards. Uh, and 18% said other means, payment plans or insurance claims. Uh, all of this is in our free ebook, which is called Weathering the Off Season. Um, this resource was really created to share these insights as well as provide actionable marketing tips to engage homeowners uh, this winter. And as our other fabulous panelists have said, what we have seen too at Modernize is homeowner demand is just not decreasing. Um, while this time is usually a time where we catch our breaths, uh, more and more homeowners are connecting with us each week. We're breaking records traffic wise as homeowners want to begin and continue their home improvement projects. And that's what I got. It's great stuff, Cassie. Thank you so much. A couple quick questions, Cassie, that, that I'm sure folks are interested in. Are there any specific trades? You mentioned that you deal with a lot of trades, but is there anything that surprised you this past year? Anything that just like was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that the demand for this trade is is so high. Yeah, Josh, that is a great question um, of our results shared in in 55 percent plan to pursue. That was across our trades. Um, I think it was most surprising to see how many homeowners plan to embark on exterior trades, which we consider like roofing, siding, and solar during this winter season. Uh, a big question for us as we were finding this data with our hypothesis was like, why now? Um, in June of this year, a consumer specialist report actually 
actually also dove into why homeowners are investing. And time was the highest cited reason. Um, so 67% of homeowners from that consumer specialist report said they simply have, quote, more time to pursue projects. Uh, the other thing I'll marry with that from our homeowner survey data at Modernize is a lot of these home large scale home improvement projects take a lot of research and planning and budgeting from our homeowners. Roofing specifically, we found in past surveys that homeowners like to uh, spend 10 plus hours researching before they find a contractor. And that kind of makes sense, right? Um, these are once in a lifetime projects most of the time and they want to make sure they're doing their due diligence. So while I think this is appealing for all trades, all professionals, uh, I think this is a really exceptionally unique opportunity for exterior trades. Awesome, Cassie. Great stuff. Thank you. And one more question. There's some ch there's some chatter over in the chat about vetting lead sources. Obviously, a lot of contractors may have been burned in the past by uh, different companies when they buy leads. Uh, when you bring on contractors, how how what's that process look like? Uh, and how can you help ensure them that they get the most quality leads? Because personally, you know, Hatch, at my company, we have an integration with Modernize where we can instantly text leads that come in and we see uh, a lot of appointments getting set for Modernize leads. So I'm curious uh, from your perspective what that looks like, Cassie. Uh, another great question, Josh, and hopefully I answer this eloquently enough. So lead generation companies are, are key for a lot of businesses. Businesses are looking for leads. They're looking to reach more homeowners on the phone, uh, whether that's through a call or text. They want to get their sales teams booked. They're trying to get jobs sold. Uh, for every business owner, head of marketing with my creative side, what I think sets Modernize apart and what I think is really important to look at is how providers are going above and beyond than just providing you leads. And I think that's a common thread we're seeing today in the webinar from your other experts about data specifically. Um, and for Modernize, as we're onboarding a client or working with a customer that we've worked with for years, there's some key elements that we're kind looking at, which is reviewing the cadence, um, or review cadence that makes sense for their business, not ours, uh, tracking their conversions correctly and identifying where in the funnel they can see improvement, and then providing free resources and tools and guidance to help make the most of their lead generation program. Um, that's really a priority of mine. That's why I love working there. We're so data focused. Um, so as you're vetting and looking into lead providers or, or vetting the one that you had currently, I would say find a partner that's there for you for every growth goal. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cassie. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Brad. You bet. All right. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about the companies that just presented, we're going to head on to head on to the next uh, segment, which is going to be talking about the sales process. But uh, if you're interested in learning more about any of these companies, please indicate in the chat or excuse me, in, indicated in the poll on the right-hand side. And we'll make sure that they uh, have your information and they can reach out and uh, provide that, that consultation for you guys. So if you're interested in learning more about any of these companies, select one, two, or three um, of the companies that just presented. Some really great insights here. We've got an awesome panel coming up uh, that's gonna be touching on the sales process. We've got Dean from Engage, Chris from Hatch, and James from Hearth. And we touched on some of the topics that they're going to be covering earlier uh, in the webinar today. We touched on some financing stats. Uh, Cassie did a, did an interest, showed some interesting stats re regarding how customers are going to want to pay for their projects. So James is going to talk more about financing and implications in 2021. Um, excited to hear from Dean talking about virtual selling and then Chris on homeowner communication, which we also touched on a bit uh, when we talked about the importance of speed to lead. So Awesome. Thanks for participating in the poll. We'll make sure that uh, the uh, presenters reach out and uh, give you guys the information that you need. All right, moving on to the next section here uh, is going to be homeowner communication. It's going to be Chris Bates from Hatch going to be talking us through this. Chris is the co-founder and CEO of Hatch, a Y Combinator company. Their messaging app for home improvement and home services companies help businesses be first to every new lead, rehash the leads that don't buy, and communicate with customers throughout the entire journey. Chris, thanks for hopping on, man. 
Josh, thanks for having me. Can you hear me? I can. You sound great. Awesome. Uh, I, I plan on maybe taking, I don't know, five to six minutes uh, talking a little bit about what we saw happen in the market in 2020 and what we're predicting to happen in 2021. I wanted to start with <clears throat> sort of why I think our company is uniquely um, set up to give you guys this information. Uh, we're a messaging platform uh, for remodelers, mainly through text messaging. Uh, it is the number one behavior change that we saw in 2020 where customers of all ages wanted to communicate with businesses they buy from over text messaging. Uh, and we really helped solve five problems. You can see them on the left. To, I'm not going to go through all of them, but today I'm going to talk about two of them because we've talked about leads. Um, we've also talked about the fact that uh, you may not be able to install jobs for 60 or 90 days. And what we're seeing the best practices or the best customers use text messaging to solve that problem and do things like get to leads faster and then help debookings. So um, what I would recommend during this time is like take a screenshot of some of these best practices because whether or not you use Hatch or not, you can implement this in your business. It should help you either make money or save money. Uh, Josh, go to the next screen for me. All right, so here's some stats, communication is everything. And this really has to do with behavior change that we've seen in the marketplace when it comes to text messaging, not just notifications, guys, but back and forth communication between the homeowner and the business. Three stats I want you to remember if you aren't using text today at scale, meaning you aren't using it to communicate, you aren't using it every interaction possible. 78%, think about this for just speed to lead. 78% of jobs go to the first contractor that responds to a lead. That's almost eight out of 10. So if you're not first, you're last. The second part here is 90% of text messages that we tracked, and that's uh, creeping up on almost 100,000 a day, are opened, read, and responded to when it comes to leads and sales follow-up. That means nine times out of 10, you will get a response from a customer. Uh, and then this number is crazy, but just kind of proves uh, what some of the lead generation folks were saying, uh, we're actually seeing customers now get uh, twice the number of bids per job uh, at the end of this year and trending into next year. So what does that mean? When a customer comes to your website and submits a website lead form, they're probably going to do that with four or five other contractors. So you got to be first to get to them. You got to talk to them on their communication channel of choice, knowing that they're probably shopping you around. We're savvy consumers. We all do it, uh, and it's happening. It's happening faster than we've ever seen. So it's pretty interesting data we've been tracking. You want to go to the next one, Josh? Cool. So this is sort of how I would think about getting better at speed to lead. Uh, this is a very high level, not in the weeds, but very high level way of thinking about going from your appointment set rate of 30% to 55%. And by appointment set rate, I mean leads that come in to ones that actually set an appointment. Break it down into three steps. We're seeing this as best in class. First step, evaluate your lead sources. Lead sources that are performing less than 50%, uh, come up with a plan on how you're gonna get to them faster, talk to them faster, become more aggressive. The way that we're seeing best in class do that right now is if you have web forms on your website performing really well, people might know the, that they're going to get a telephone call and that's working for you, you may not start there. You might want to start at a lead aggregate where you may be competing with other contractors in the market and put a plan together to partner with us and, and somebody like Modernize to evaluate your cost per lead, your set rate, and how quickly you get to them. First thing, so evaluate your lead sources. Second thing, develop a plan. Set expectations on a response time. Uh, the best uh, performing folks that we've seen have said, hey, if I'm going to buy a lead from somebody like um, Home Advisor, we're going to set expectations that we're going to get in touch with this lead within a minute. And if we don't, we're not going to spend money here. Then delegate the ownership of who owns this these uh, lead sources and then put a system and technology in place to implement and track it. If you do those things really well, the third part's pretty simple. Implement the plan, measure it, and iterate over and over again. On the next slide here that Josh is going to show you guys uh, is an actual uh, playbook. I take a screenshot of it. But for your underperforming lead sources, meaning they don't 
turn to appointments as, as much as you would like them to, follow something like this. A pretty aggressive one-day touch that happens within 30 seconds of the lead coming into the business. And then follow up on day two, three, four, five, six, and use all these channels of communication. This stuff will literally within a month, a month and a half of you A-B testing some uh, verbiage as well as number of touches, you will see that appointment set rate go from 30% to above 50. We've seen it over and over again. Um, the next, uh, I guess, yep, there it is. Perfect. So let's call this, we call this the uh, customer experience portion of Hatch, which is essentially how you communicate with your customers after they buy. Uh, and we're all doing this to some extent, but what we're finding is that because it's taking longer to get jobs installed due to supply chain stuff or just overwhelming demand, uh, is to put a calendar in place to have multiple communication touch points along the way. And it's taking debookings and cancels from 5% to less than 2%. So if you have customers that are getting, I don't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to say buyer's remorse, but they might, if it's 60 days out and somebody comes in at day 45 and says, hey, we changed our mind, it's generally because you haven't communicated along the way. So just real quickly, Josh, go ahead and click on all these. I want to go through them real quick. Day one, send multiple communications thanking uh, the customer directly from the owner. Send a text and a voicemail. We're seeing that work really, really well. <clears throat> On day nine or, or three or four days after that first day, send the warranty information. Do it via text so they have it with a link so the customer has it. Think about an Amazon experience when you buy from Amazon. It should feel the same way uh, for a home remodel project. Do the next one, Josh. <clears throat> so day 18 is where things start to, a uh, buyer's remorse might start to kick in, especially if they haven't gotten any updates on their product. Send them content. <clears throat> Show them <clears throat> excuse me, we partner with companies like Hover and these other companies where you can give 3D renderings or even uh, an ebook on how consumers are taking care of their home and doing uh, remodeling projects and send that via text and email. And then these last two touch points are just when you schedule and confirm the installation toward the end of the month, make sure you're doing it on multiple channels. And, uh, and we prefer automation because you make sure it gets done every time. And then, of course, confirming the day of the appointment. And if you're doing all of these touch points appropriately, we're seeing debookings go down. So if you think about communicating with your customers, speed the lead. It's about getting the leads faster for underperforming lead sources. And then there's, of course, uh, communicating with customers during this what we call dark period or white space. It's making a huge difference. Awesome I think stuff. that's all I got, Josh. <laughs> Good stuff, Chris. Thanks so much. Awesome. So great insights there from Chris from Hatch. And next up, we have Dean, uh, the CEO of Engage, Dean Curtis. Dean has a passion for the intersection of technology and business. Dean has served in leadership roles throughout his career at Apple, Palm, Intel Sync, and Oracle. At Apple, Dean was instrumental in defining and executing the strategy for adoption of iPhone and iPad across the Fortune 500. He joined Engage in February of 2017 and a CRO and CEO was named CEO in October 2019. Dean, welcome to the webinar. Really interesting history that definitely applies to what you guys are doing over at Engage. So thanks for hopping on. Look forward to hearing from you. You bet. Thanks, Josh. We appreciate the opportunity. So if you could advance that one, you know, when back at 2020, uh, we think about the events and we realize that you know, we don't control events, right? The only thing that we can control ever is our to them. We all want great outcomes, but we don't control the events. We don't control the outcomes. We only control our response. And when you look at the response of the home improvement industry, we noticed that home improvement companies adapted very, very quickly to all the events that they had to deal with in, in what will be a memorable year forever. Um, and when you, as we've worked with a lot of our customers, uh, we've seen through different interactions, through webinars and, and polling, that 61% are using a digital presentation in the sales process. Now, you could look at that number and say, well, oh, it's amazing, you know, six out of every 10 uh, people who are in the, you know, in the sales process and home improvement are using digital sales. But the 39% that are, there's a real opportunity. And we've seen that number go up throughout 2020 because digital transformation has accelerated. Um, 
on, in our own platform, we've seen a 6x increase in the number of engaged presentations that are being delivered uh, since March of 2020. Now, this is with new customers, but it's also existing customers who have shifted the way that they are uh, interacting with their customers from truly in the home face-to-face -face 100% to, uh, I would like to call it more of a hybrid than a purely virtual approach, right? So as, as what we've seen as a, as a major trend is looking at the sales process and truly understanding where digital makes sense and where the traditional way of selling also makes sense and marrying those two based on protocols and uh, regulations and things that you have to deal with and really understanding what is the role of the different tools that you have at your disposal in that sales process to move a customer, or move a prospect down the funnel to close? If you're one call close, maybe you've been able to really transition to fully virtual closing that way, but maybe there's a way to pre-qualify leads before jumping in the car and going through the procedures that are required to be face-to-face -face with someone. We've also noticed that 55% of the people that we're interacting with are bringing a laptop or a tablet to meetings. There's a huge opportunity for innovation for those who are not to really, you know, fast forward into 2021, how can technology play a role in uh, those folks who maybe aren't using technology during that sales process. So if we take a look at what's what we anticipate happening in 2021, um, you know, it's really three things, digital tools, and we've talked about a number of them here, whether it's, you know, text messaging to uh, messaging and, and hatch to really accelerate the communication and, and streamline that communication, whether it's your CRM or lead generation, there's tons of digital tools. And um, we like to think about it internally for our sales team as what is the stack that uh, the tech stack that's required for us to be most effective at our job. And that's not only from a, an addition perspective, but it's also from a subtraction perspective, right? So as more tools are, we're made aware of more tools, maybe there's some pruning that has to happen in order to get that right tech stack in there that's going to really enable the sales team to meet the requirements of the new customer and the market that we're going after. Um, secondly, Digital presentations. We are a digital presentation company. I'll tell you a little bit more about us uh, in a second. But we think that there are ways that you can leverage presentations. And I should actually put presentations in quotes because the way people think about a presentation is changing, right? It's no longer a, 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 a death march through several different slides. It's meeting the customer where they are and and really having a conversation with them about what it is that interests them most. And lastly, digital transformation. Now we saw this in 2020, where every business has a digital transformation agenda. Those agendas were accelerated tremendously in, uh, in 2020. So we see in 2021, another rapid adoption of technology. Now be careful though, because just adding technology for the sake of technology, is, is foolish, like take a measured approach to really seeing what's working, how it's helping, how it's driving customers down the funnel to really close and, and really add value to them first and obviously then accrue to value to your, to your own company. So how can Engage help? You know, at Engage, we feel it's just plain wrong that it's so hard to create engaging sales content, share it with the people who need it, and then measure whether or not that investment in that sales content has been successful and whether it's actually been beneficial to your business. How do we do that? We do it through a sales presentation platform that we call the Engage Suite. So what in Engage presentations do is they give you a new way of presenting your message, whether that's uh, integrating images, video, and text in a really professional presentation that's easy to make. Um, we'd love to help you in that digital transformation journey uh, and think about presentations, not only in the sense of I'm going to sit with you and talk, but also maybe in those text messages, you're sending out content to people where they are uh, able to really understand and you're educating them along that either the sales process while they're waiting for things to, uh, to come in and whether they're waiting for that install, all the things that the previous presenters have talked about as well. Uh, so I'll hand it back over to you, Josh, uh, to finish up with Hearth. Dean, thanks for that. Really good insights. And, and speaking from, from personal personal experience, I, I built the State of Remodeling ebook using Engage. It's a fantastic product. And I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to check out that ebook after this webinar. We'll send a link out. So uh, looking forward to 
sharing that with you guys so you'll be able to experience Engage for yourself. Uh, you had an interesting stat here, Dean, that I want to I touch on real quick. Yeah. Uh, it says 55% of sales reps bring a laptop or tablet to sales meetings. What, what other tools do you see your contractors using uh, when it comes to using that laptop or tablet? And how does that incorporate with what you guys are doing over at Lead? Yeah, so so interesting question. I talk about that tech stack, right? And it, I think it's important to really revisit the tech stack that a company is using pretty regularly to understand the value that it's bringing. Internally, we just went through an assessment of a, a top of funnel tool that we were like hot to trot on. We're like, we're gonna do this, right? And we realized that we didn't really need a new tool. We just need to use the tools we have better, right? So uh, we, we work hand in hand with, you know, um, Improve It 360, a lot of our customers are using that CRM tool and then side by side with Engage. Uh, we see, you know, people, you know, you mentioned Leap. Leap is another one. We use, you know, our customers using Hatch. But the key is really understanding the types of technology that are really going to move your business forward and making sure they work together in a, in a, in a pretty seamless way. Uh, we, we, we do not integrate directly with a lot of the um, software that I, that I mentioned. However, it's super easy for people, for sales teams to, to integrate on their own and make sure that information is either flowing back and forth or the ex most importantly, the experience with the customer is seamless and they can really get to that close faster. Thanks Dean. Appreciate the insights today. You bet. Great. Next up is James Wade from Hearth. James is the head of channel marketing and national partnerships for Hearth. Hearth is an alternative approach to home improvement financing that eliminates all dealer fees to contractors, works with 13 lenders, FICO's down to 500, and can pre-qualify homeowners in two minutes or less without touching their credit score. Hearth turns all customers into cash buyers and loans fund in as little as 24 hours. There is no underwriting criteria for contractors to join. Sign up today and fund deals tomorrow. From personal experience, we've got a lot of customers on Hatch that use Hearth uh, to incorporate financing in their sales process, and they're seeing really good results. So, uh, James, welcome to the webinar. Hey, thanks, man. It's excited to be here. Um, yeah, everyone that, that's gone before me, it's, it's, you know, you loved all the data points that you guys brought up, and um, you know, I think I'm honestly going to try and build upon a lot of that. So. Um, First and foremost, I know Josh mentioned, that, you know, we want to start with the, the why hard slide. Guys, the, the number one thing that we've heard over the last little bit, um, 2020 especially, is contractors are sick of paying dealer fees. Um, you know, when you look at a lot of the uh, more traditional lending sources, and, you know, out of respect, I won't rattle off names, but a lot of the, the traditional lending sources, while they have amazing products, a lot of what they're doing is geared toward marketing. Um, you, you, you look at, hey, I'm going to offer no payment, no interest, or 0% or 299 for 10 years or whatever it might be. Those are awesome, um, but those rates don't exist in the real world. So when you look at it, the only way you're getting that rate is someone's paying for it. Um, you know, and we heard from a lot of the different uh, folks on the call today that there's different reasons why people have bought or different reasons why people will buy. And, you know, overwhelmingly, the number one reason why we see any or that at least the data suggests people purchase any sort of home improvement deal, number one is always going to be price. You know, they're shopping around. I think it was like 92% of people are getting more than one quote. Um, you know, oftentimes it's even more than that. So when you look at it, if you're paying a 13, you know, 10%, whatever, even like a 5% dealer fee, and someone is selling next to you with the exact same deal, exact same quote, um, exact same materials, and they don't push forward that 5 to 15% dealer fee, well, they're already winning by 5% at minimum. So again, when you look at it, dealer fees don't do anyone anything any good other than, you know, potentially getting leads in the door. So one of the things that Hearth did early on was really recognize that there are ways to do this. We just have to look to a lot of the adjacent industries that, you know, have been incredibly successful, like, you know, mortgage, refi, home equity lines, et cetera, which is why we work with 13 plus different lenders. It's in 2020, the other crazy trend that we saw was that there was a ton of home improvement companies that actually went belly up their funding sources, the second the pandemic struck, and, you know, things started getting crazy in like February, March, they just dried up. 
You know, they had no ability to fund loans anymore, and they went out of business. Um, and we also saw, you know, Josh mentioned the underwriting criteria. Those companies that hadn't been in business for two, three years and weren't doing two, three million plus in revenue got kicked off the platform. They said, yeah, you guys are too small and you're too big of a risk. Bye. So the cool thing that we did is we went back, and this was a couple of years even prior to the pandemic, is we said there's a better way to do this. Dealer fees shouldn't exist. Let's just let the homeowner's credit set the APRs. So again, we work with 13 different lenders. We can go as deep as a 500 FICO. And like a lot of the other folks on the call today alluded to, it's the experience that you're really investing in with these customers. You've got to make sure that the way they're buying mimics the Amazons, these other approaches. You know, it needs to be transactional, but also super transparent. So it has to be a single source. You know, if you go to multiple applications, get denied from one and have to redo it all over again, that's no good. So the way Hearth works is we do it totally different. Instead of getting someone to apply specifically for one loan, we prequal everyone. They all start with the exact same process. Prequal first, and then we pre-qualify them for the max that their credit will allow. So if they ask for 10, oftentimes you're going to see they might come back for 15 or 20 that they're pre-qualified for. Now, pushing that information over to the sales rep also allows them to just have an ultra-transparent conversation. I no longer have to go, well, okay, we got you pre-call, or excuse me, we got you approved for that 10K, sign here. It's, I can move this way earlier into that sales process, sometimes even before I even run the appointment. And I can get that person to say, hey, you know what, Mr. Jones, we actually pre-qualified you for up to 20. I know you only asked for 10, but, you know, let, let, let me show you the difference between a 10,000 and 11,000 and a $15,000 roof, Right. You be the one to decide. You've eliminated all objections already for anything related to finance. Um, and now at this point, you're basically just getting them excited to solve the pain that you originally intended to do in the first place. So we, we can go to the next slide as well. The other huge trend that we've seen, and this goes back to like, why is everything booming in certain technology fronts? And it really boils down to the millennials. Like in 2020, one of the craziest things that we saw, and we'll cover this on the next slide as well, but we saw this huge shift in the way people are behaving. It's millennial behavior is basically pulling every single demographic in the direction of the millennial. Whether you're a baby boomer, a Gen X or a Gen Y, -er, it doesn't matter. The way you use technology because of the way Amazon or Apple any app for that matter, Facebook, Instagram, they're all designing their applications to cater to a millennial. So in fact, what they're doing is they're basically training everybody to think the same way. So all of the data that you see on this slide is effectively showing you that the millennials are the ones that are not only the number one new buyer for homes and the fastest growing, but they're also the ones driving technological behavior. And if we go to the next slide, the other thing, and, and this was actually, uh, Harsa did a really cool partnership um, a couple of months ago with Modernize. And some of the data that we saw, again, is that it's not so much why a person's going to buy from you that you need to really design your products, and, and or not products, but your processes. It's you have to understand why they won't buy from you. Those are the individuals that you need to basically go fight to get. That's the market share. Transparency, communication, and expertise, or at least the presence of expertise, um, or the appearance of expertise, that is the reason why someone won't buy from you, is if you fail on those main three things. That's second to price. So again, you can not only kill a lot of your fees that, you're, that, that typically drive up the cost of your jobs, you can be more competitive on price, which is the number one reason someone purchases. And then number two, you got to make sure that whatever technology you're financing or anything that you use is ultra transparent. You know, if you're baking in dealer fees to the cost of your job, that is the exact opposite of transparency, and your customers are going to shop you around. Like Hearth is the number one fastest growing company in home improvement financing for a reason. And it's because we killed a ton 
of the headache processes and dealer fees. Plus, on top of that, we launched a payment structure that allows you to fully go back. And the second that person funds their loan, I can then send them a payment request and have them pay in full for that job up front. You don't have to deal with any of the regulations or limitations on stage funding. If I sell a $15,000 roof, great. I can send a $15,000 payment request and have 15K in my checking account at my business in 24 hours. So again, there's a lot of really cool things that can be done. If you're at all interested whatsoever, again, we've got a great relationship and actually an integration specifically with Hatch. We'd love to have the conversation with you guys. And uh, I think in 2021, the thing you're going to really need to focus on is that millennial home buyer is going to become more and more and more the driver of all behavior for any demographic. So, thanks, man. Yeah, great, great stuff, James. A couple of questions that came to mind, uh, just looking back on what Cassie talked to earlier with respect to homeowners looking to finance at least some part of their next project. How often do you see contractors financing a portion of the project instead of the whole project? How common is that? It's super common. Like think of the way any consumer buys something that's a higher ticket item. If you're gonna buy a car, a tiny fraction of individuals are paying cash for those cars. I know that I'm gonna get a way better car if I go find a mix of down payment and um, uh, finding my affordable monthly payment. So again, I, I can get five times the amount of features and, and quality of vehicle if I put five grand down and then finance the balance. That also allows me to start playing around with the different rates. So again, if I'm financing a lower amount, great, my monthly payment's gonna be significantly less. So we see this a ton with cash buyers where they say, oh yeah, I'm just gonna pay cash. And a lot of our, our companies that are super successful with financing will go, great, well, how much were you planning on paying with cash? Okay, were there any other projects that you were planning on doing in the near future? Yeah, maybe. Okay, well, let's take a look at combining those because right now we've got super low rates. And at that point, they basically show them that financing and using a portion of the cash that they had allotted allowed them to basically, um, it allowed them to basically do more home improvement projects um, where we've seen an average, um, if you look at the average ticket of a finance deal versus a cash deal, it's 30% higher. So all the time, that is super common. So thanks James for uh, participating. This is really good insights. Yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Have a good day. Awesome, guys. So uh, if you want to learn more about any of the companies we just talked to today, Hatch, Engage, Hearth, let us know. I know a few folks actually uh, jumped on the chat and asked how to uh, how to get in touch with any of these companies. Let us know. We'll reach out and we'll uh, you know give you guys a demonstration, uh, see if it uh, if what we do uh, will work into, into your workflow. So head on over to the chat and let us know. Excuse me, the poll section. And we're, uh, we're just about wrapping up, guys. Uh, we'll keep the poll up for a little bit longer, but uh, now's the time for Q&A for any of the panelists. I know we had a few questions come in and uh, really interesting stuff here. Tom Tom had something very uh, very in, in, insightful that I, that I really appreciate. Uh, people buy people, price is secondary. People don't go for cheaper if they don't like you, Tom. That's a, that's a really great point there. Right. Go ahead and close that poll. Hey. All right. So head on over to the Q and A section, guys, um, and you know, ask any panelists questions that you might have. I'm going to go through these real quick, uh, and we'll touch on a couple of the questions that came in. Ready? Come on. Hey, James. Would you uh, would you mind going on mute for us there? Right. Well, I think I think one question that that we saw throughout the chat is uh, people asking about or alluding to the 2021. Obviously, the pandemic is happening. 
Uh, what have you seen contractors do, uh, and this, this can be for any of the panelists who want to jump in, uh, in terms of communicating COVID procedures uh, and what those look like? Because obviously it's different in every state, but I'm curious to see if any panelists want to jump in here uh, on the COVID procedures that they've seen, anything that might work or might not work. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Want to jump in? I guess I'll. Like, <laughs> yeah, go. I'll, I'll take it for stab. Um, through my role with Modernize Social is a really big tool um, and something we're constantly trying to create better resources for our contractors on. And I have been uh, especially impressed by how businesses are using social media, including like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram to share their COVID procedures. We know homeowners still wanna begin and continue projects. We know they also are concerned about keeping their family healthy and safe. Um, and so we've seen a lot of success uh, from contractors who post that in blogs, share that across their platforms, pin that to the top, because I think that's one question homeowners have immediately going into a project. And if you address that before that first call, when they're just researching, it's just positioning you for a better sale overall. Awesome stuff. Kevin, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, we're seeing the same thing. Um, when COVID hit in, you know, in March and such, the, it was really important to have it. So we had it all the landing pages, um, integrating with the communications after the leads come in. It was something that was constantly communicated to people. But we also started to notice is as we're coming towards the end of the year, we sort of felt that people were tired of hearing about it, you know, and talking everywhere they'd go on the websites, it's COVID, COVID, COVID. So we actually took a little bit of a step back on these messages and just late you know sort of backed up a little bit on that just to sort of you know take a step back because a lot of people are getting sort of tired of it so that's how we sort of adapted we were really strong at the beginning and then sort of backed off towards the end nice chris you have anything to add there yeah just quickly it's similar you know kind of messaging you know people going adjusting their you know the templates that they have within um the improver 360 putting in notes you know about you know when they send that appointment confirmation email or a text message that's going out just letting them know and it's, it was just about awareness and you know i think just showing that they're listening they're adhering to it and and really it comes down to you know making sure that the appoint the customer is comfortable with how you sell and being flexible and being able to do that that's the key message awesome great stuff there guys uh, a couple other things that came up that I, that I wanna open a discussion with guys and I appreciate everybody staying on here. Um, there is, you know, looking ahead to 2021, obviously there's 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 a lot of uncertainty, right? And, and we can't assume that we're necessarily gonna have everything quote unquote back to normal till even as late as mid, mid 2022. What specific types of jobs and, and types of remodeling work, given the information we've heard about millennials and how everybody's stuck at home, what trades do you think will be uh, the most high demand? I know, Cassie, you talked about exter exterior companies having an increase in demand. What other type of, of, of trades do you guys think would be uh, the most, uh, I guess you could say, highest demand uh, over the next year? Can, can I take first pass again? Um, yeah, you got it. Some, a, a few trades that are new for Modernize, we were acquired by Quinn Street in July and so have had a lot of growth, have been the aging in place trades. And so currently in my role, I'm doing a lot of research about COVID's impact on nursing homes and assisted living communities because they've been so, had such a catastrophic impact through this and, and just a great loss of life. And so a lot of homeowners um, either for themselves or family members are looking to invest in upgrading their homes to be more accessible. And for modernized, we cater to medical alerts and stair lifts and walk-in tubs and even just, you know, expanding hallways to like accommodate a wheelchair. Um, so for us going into 2021, that's something we really have our sights set on. Interesting. Yeah, and I, I'll Back on that, just, I, I think that's we're seeing the same thing. You know, that aging in place is a is a market that is definitely growing in in the bath market. You know, walk in tubs, 
the one day baths. I mean, those, I mean, I'm getting more, you know, uh, many of our customers are in that they're seeing explosive growth in that area and we're getting a lot of new companies who are adding that market. They're going existing um, contractors who are adding the bath market. Um, that's a huge trend that I see continuing. We're seeing that too, Chris. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great opportunity for all the contractors here to maybe expand what type of services that you guys offer uh, these additional trades. And I'm certain, I'm certain Modernize will have a, a great piece of content around this and good insights there. We just launched an ebook on it <laughs> last week. So it's free. It's on our website. I know uh, weathering the off season's key now, but we're we're constantly I'm you know tasked with that. So I'm constantly trying to just provide new resources for everyone. And that and that's something you just kind of harps on. You know, one of the key values that I think we, you know, we bring to the marketplace or your any of your CRM does is Leveraging that database that you have is critical. And companies who are successful, how do they continue to be successful? They add new products and services that are a good fit with what they do. Um, you know, so whether it be you know an exterior company, you know, they've got this database, they've done good work, they've gained the trust. I mean, that's the big thing is you know, people want to trust who they're working with. Now they offer baths. I mean, that it's a no-brainer for them to, to for somebody a homeowner to go back and work with that company if they had a great experience so it kind of ties into all the things we talked about earlier you know creates a great customer experience and what happens from a great customer experience referrals you know cross-sell opportunities that's where we're seeing these companies really grow and expand and that that's been you know that's kind of like the the market that we work in and as you see with our customer base they are expanding into new markets new product offerings and that's a key driver for growth heading into next year and beyond love it chris kevin i, I i've heard some whisperings over the last few weeks that i, I want to get your take on um of folks that say do not invest in advertising during the holiday season because it'll be more expensive and it's not worth it. What do you say to those people? That's a good question. Um, during the holiday season, it's obviously not as its ultimate peak like you would normally see in spring, you know? Uh, so there's a cyclical, you know, you, you sort of see that cycle within the business. Um, a lot of what's happening over the holidays is you're essentially planting seeds for the new year when uh, when it's time to to close that business. So the lead volume a lot of times throughout the holidays might not be uh, as much as we normally see in spring, but we see a whole lot of business closing come around February, March. And when you look back at when those leads came in, a lot of them came in towards the end of the previous year. So we tell all of our customers continue advertising uh, and we invest also a little bit more money more towards branding the business during uh, those times of the year as well. All of this really has a big impact come around spring. So that's the, really the, what we see in, on our side. Good stuff. And, and Dean, I have a question for you. Where Obviously, a lot of these companies certainly have a presentation some way, shape or form, right? I mean, they've got a, a sales presentation. They might have a pamphlet. What, what parts of the sales process are you leveraging these presentations uh, to help increase the likelihood of closing the deal? So I think the short answer is yes, <laughs> right? It's everywhere. Um, and I think that's the, that's the key, right? Because and, and you have to really think and change your mind around what what is a presentation. Is it just, it could be something as simple as the the company story. That is, it's, it's a better way to tell your company story and really hook them in. Uh, it could be a one page description of a win that you're gonna use in the text messaging campaign. Uh, it could be a product presentation. It's it's the, the line of windows that you install or the roofing uh, that you install. So we've seen companies do lots of different things um, and, and really challenge their thinking around this uber monolithic presentation to maybe presentations with a purpose that have specific roles to play or jobs to do in the actual sales process that they're, that they're reinventing. Awesome. Great stuff. Cool. Well, that just about wraps it up guys. Um, thanks for all those who stayed on an extra 26 minutes. This was, jam packed as I as I expected and you can you can never always hit the, hit the one hour mark spot on so I appreciate everybody's patience uh, on the bottom left hand side of your screen you've got uh, a free download for the state of remodeling guide all the companies here there's additional data a lot of interesting points there so um, feel free to just jump in and get that free download it'll direct you to our website where you'll be able to uh, get access to that ebook but I want to thank everybody for staying on hopping onto the webinar thank you to all the panelists 
for hopping on. I know you guys all just turned off your cameras, but uh, thank you guys so much for, for jumping on here and providing all this great data. And I encourage everybody to go check out the State of Remodeling ebook after this webinar. We'll send it to everybody here, uh, the link to the ebook after the webinar, and then we'll also uh, you know, drop the recording of this uh, webinar today. So thanks everybody for hopping on. Thank you to all the panelists and everybody have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh, appreciate it. Good. Happy holidays, everybody.